Please welcome co-founder and CEO of space company Galactica, Aliya Prokofieva. Hi, everyone. How are you today? Do, hmm? Do you know what is special about this day? Do you know what is day today? Anyone has any ideas? Summit, yeah, great. Yeah, today is summit. But today actually is a very important day because today, 67 years ago, a first human being, a first man, Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin, he went to space. And this totally changed the world. And it was the beginning of the space age. And it's a big honor for me to speak with you today about space and about future in space. So let's go on. So actually, uh, if if you words about me, I'm a space visionary. I'm founder and CEO of a private space company, Galactica. And my way to space, it started a long time ago in a sunny day of September 1986 as I was born in the Pulkovska Observatory, one of the oldest observatories in the world. And my mom, back in that time, she was head of this observatory, and she was one of the well-known astrophysicists in the USSR. And what was great is that from since my childhood, my life, everything was, was whole with space. It was stories about galaxies, universes, stars, and all the great things. And what is very interesting is that all my friends, family, and they were all talking to me about space. And of course, it influenced a lot my life. Later on, in 2016, I founded my private space company, Galactica. The mission of the Galactica was my childhood dreams, my childhood ambitions. As in childhood, I thought that space, it should be habitable and should be accessible and affordable for all human beings. That living in space, that habitation in space, it's like so normal, like to go and drink coffee and to go, I don't know, to Paris. The same way should be the way we go to space. And nowadays, the mission of my company is to make this happen and to make this happen by a few things. First of all, to make accesses very cheap with launch vehicles and pilot spaceships. Second thing is to make habitation very comfortable in space. And that's how we started one of the biggest projects. Well, the main idea of my company is to create space city, space settlement, the orbital city. The purpose of the city is to make comfortable habitation with zero gravity for 10,000 people. Could you imagine this? 10,000 people could live in space, and this is true, because we have technologies for this. The great thing is that when we started to think about, like, okay, guys, how we could live in space, space city, how we should construct it, which questions we should, which problems we should deal with, we thought about history about city building and about countries, how it was developed through ages. And what we found the great challenge, I think, is that the majority of technologies which were tested in space, afterwards they were successfully implemented on Earth, as space is very challenging, a very sophisticated environment. And when technology is there, afterwards it could be successfully brought on Earth. And there are many examples for this. For example, when you fry your eggs on a Teflon pad, it's an it's example of the technology which came from space. Other things are solar panels, brackets which we use for our teeth, and so on. And today I would like to tell you about the main challenges which we face now on Earth and the main challenges which we could deal using space technologies. One of the biggest challenges is the water. Water is very important both in space and on Earth. And do you know that every year, five million of people in Africa, could you imagine five million of people die without water? Because they have no access to clean water or they don't have access to water at all. The same thing is going in Mongolia, in Ulan Bator, as by 2021, it will be shortage of water overall in Ulan Bator. And that's a huge problem which, which we are facing. Important thing is to how we could deal with it. 
And space shows us very good examples of technologies which could be used in order to deal with this water, water problem. And one of it is asteroid mining. You would be surprised, but asteroids are the biggest thing where you can find lots of water and lots of clean water. And there are technologies already which are being tested how to dig asteroids in order to get rare earth metals, in order to get water, and it could be used on Earth. Another big thing is electricity. Do you know that actually solar panels, they were first used on space stations and on space launch vehicles and satellites. And many years later, it becomes this boom of this uh, eco technologies and solar panels which are used to, to create energy. And that's a great thing, as using these solar panels, by 2050, we could use uh, lots of electricity uh, which are produced only by renewable sources. And this is absolutely great because we could provide renewable source of energy worldwide to different poor countries, to different far regions where they don't have energy at all. Another big thing is robotics. As in space, of course, you should have place to live. And this place to live, it should be very comfortable and very quickly, very quickly arise. And one of the greatest technologies which are being tested now, for example, by our company, is 3D printer. 3D printer which could print houses, could print constructions. And this is absolutely important technology for far regions, for very regions where, it's, where there is no access for railroads or for different expensive materials. So we could provide opportunity to have very cheap and very affordable living for many people. Another great thing is about space is connectivity. Nowadays, there are lots of satellites already on the orbit which provide us broadcasting, telecommunication, telemedicine, and networking. And within the next 10 years, lots of constellations will be launched, and this could solve many different problems, like communication during disasters, like lack of communication in poor countries, and provide connection overall 1 billion of people with internet and network. And this will lead to growth of education, growth of development of countries, and growth of people. So here, what we should think about is what will be our future and how it should be connected to space. The recent years showed us not much interest in space. There are only few private companies in the world who are occupied with that. But the biggest challenge is to gather people together and to gain the most attention to space and to the ways it could solve Earth's problems. We are in Galactica, we have launched our own community. I call it Global Space Community. The main purpose of the community is to gather people worldwide, is to gather everyone who has passion, who has attention, not only to space, but to Earth, to what will happen next, what will happen in the future. The community will gain together different space enthusiasts, different technologies, it will promote space technologies, it will help to raise funding, it will help to raise attention and to raise awareness to space and space technologies. And the most important thing is to do through this community global space projects, which could really change our world and could really change the things that are going now. As in space, for that moment, only 500 people have been in space. This is nothing. And this is not the development that we are do going to do. And the important thing is to bring everyone to space and to bring these projects happen. And this could be only solved by making this international community with no rival, but with the union of people and union of countries and technologies. And my aim is to bring you look up, look up in the sky, because in order to solve these Earth problems, the problems we are currently facing. We need to have this out-of-the-box approach. We need to focus on the space, on the future. And this how we could survive, how we could have a better life, both on Earth, in space, and for our future. Thank you.